Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs. Welcome to our tutorial about how to make a roguelike in Pico 8. Uh, I, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried, I have to say. The reason why I'm worried is uh, I looked at the clock uh, or I looked at the calendar, let's, let's at the big clock, <laughs> at, the, at the year clock. And that calendar told me that we have, uh, at the time of my recording, I, we have like around nine days left. Uh, until the seven day roguelike challenge begins. So in nine days, this tutorial has to be over. This kind of put like a restriction of how many episodes I can take, uh, or okay, I can create, sorry, <laughs> take as well. <laughs> um, so at, of course, um, at episode, um, if I continue the current schedule, uh, releasing two episodes per day um, this episode has to like this tutorial has to be finished by episode 53 because that's going to be the th um, Thursday before uh, the 28th uh, of February got them why, why do you have February why do you have 40, uh, like some so few days just a couple of more days like in regular months what's wrong with you February mm. anyways so this tutorial has to be over on the um, 53rd episode and we are already 41 here so not a lot of days left or not a lot of episodes left. On the other hand, have you played our game recently? Have you played our game recently? Because it's it's a it's you know there's stuff happening in our game. You can fight monsters. I mean you can get hit. It's, you know we have like there's you know there's it's it's a game. You um, so maybe you, you can't really see how advanced our game is because there's like a lot of um, like we for example we turned off like the fog. So if we turn on the fog, let's turn on the fog real quick. Um, you will see that uh, this is actually ooh you know okay maybe we should turn off the fog in the in the tutorial, but you know this is. I'm not sure why. Why this happened? Oh, it didn't didn't um, clear the fog. Interesting. So, we, hey, we already found the bug. So let's fix this bug, and then after we fix this bug, we're gonna move over to. Uh, I want today to show you a new function that will save us a bunch of tokens. We are pretty, uh, you know, riding high on a token wave, and there's like a very important, very efficient method of um, saving a bunch of tokens that I will explain to you. This is gonna be probably one of the last uh, functions that I will copy, just like verbatim from um, from another program so so get 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 your body and mind ready for that um, and the other thing I want to do today is I'm going to introduce a bunch of new um, uh, I'm going to do more work with the tile map and we're going to expand this we're going to this is kind of like a preliminary thing with this purple thing we're going to bring back um, our original coral scheme and I want to expand I want to add some new tile maps to add more decorations to the room. So one after another. First of all, uh, um, yeah, so the blank map, right? That's a, that's a bit of a problem. So let's, how about we get this one, this bad boy out here and we put it in the gen function. So generally when we generate new floor, so when we do a map gen, let's do a blank map one and I mean, we can just do a blank map zero here. It's fine. It's fine. It's generally fine. So we have like something like this. And then when you're here, there's a bit of another issue here. When the game begins, we want to uh, unfog. I put the unfog here after the gen floor is great uh, for, for our beginning but we for, we're gonna put this in here after we generate the map that makes more sense now uh, I kind of don't like how we do the blank map twice so I mean a simple solution would be just like to do it like this and then yeah it's it's fine we're just gonna overwrite it it's good something like this Okay, so you can see, ha, huh, now that we have to actually explore this the entire thing, it's good. Oh, I noticed something that's interesting. This, these tiles are all uh, translucent. <laughs> I forgot that we have this functionality. That's amazing. Yeah, so the, or the yellow thing was translucency, uh, the, was like opaqueness. So let me, let me take a couple of seconds and for me to fix this. <laughs> Cool. Um, 
I, by the way, it's kind of funny how I hyped our game and then I, I, I want, want to show you the game and it's like, oh, it's actually, it's, actually, it's actually a mess. But I think it's kind of worthwhile to every now and then to, to take a step back and kind of be like, okay, wh why are we actually here? What, what are we about it? Okay, so we can see this was actually interesting because I kind of like fought the monsters without thinking about this and actually lost a lot of health and it could have saved all itself. So this is really cool and exploring those levels is fun. Like these are the the the, the pathways we're creating here are really cool. Oh, I have to be watch careful here. So this is interesting. Now I, I actually, I cannot really fight this monster very well because uh, now I'm dead. That's good. Um, I couldn't fight this. Oh, what, what's happening here? Why? I want to. Want to oh, wait, there was something there. When I press escape, it showed me. I want to die real quick. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> I want to. Real quick, I want to be. Something seems to be go going wrong. Ah, I know what the problem is. For the procedural generation, we. Um, are no longer fading in. We no longer check fade. Um, so if we remove this, so let me now let me now get get smashed by the monsters. Oh. <laughs> So, you know, you have like, we actually have like an actual game at our hands. I might remove the Minecraft mode for now um, because I I don't think we're going to need it. Um, and that actually lets us test the game a little bit more. Um, where, oh, it wasn't gameplay, right? It was the Minecraft mode. And that kind of like forces us to, to actually try to do strategy. Now, we cannot actually do a lot of strategy because our levels are pretty empty. Uh, the only way for us to fix um, uh, Zugzwang is actually to open doors. And the doors are kind of like the only strategic um, uh, element. So that's why I want to kind of like add more um, more variation to you know what, what we have in our levels, adding uh, objects and so forth. But this is actually a good template. We just now have to kind of make this more interesting. However, here now we come to the to the part where I want to introduce you to a function called explode. And that seems like I'm trying to add explosions, but it's actually not the case. So um, you might remember that we like every pretty much we put like a lot of data into arrays, you see, like we put like a lot of stuff into arrays and those arrays actually made make up for quite a lot of our um, our token count. So so look before like just without with those arrays, we are at 5,363 tokens, right? And if we just remove those arrays temporarily, bam, let's say 200 tokens. And they will be a lot more in the future because look, th these are like arrays for mobs and we only have like four, mo uh, two mobs. If you want to expand to have more mobs, this will be, this will become a lot bigger. It will take a lot more tokens. Same with items. You want to have more items. It, we will have to invest a lot of more, more tokens in those items. Um, and eventually we, we will, we won't be able to add any more content in our game just because we are investing so much um, effort in, into these tokens, uh, into this, uh, this arrays. And also think about uh, if we expand our systems, if we, you know, our mobs will have more stats or our, our items will have more stats, this will too even exponentially, I'm not sure if it's exponentially, but at least, you know, it will increase our token count that we invest in those arrays even more. And it's just like data, you know, why do we have to invest token in this? So I want you to introduce him. Actually, I'm a bit sad that it's just 200 tokens. I was hoping it was like, you know, I don't know, 500. Anyways, it will be 500 eventually. So what does an explode function do? The explode function is something that, that is available in a lot, of, a lot of like other languages. In Pico 8, we don't have a, like a um, native explode function. And that would be actually really cool if maybe Zap in the future uh, added an explode function to to like the base set of Pico 8, like, like a, um, you know, uh, native explode function so we don't have to always put it in but you know um, so the idea with explode function is that it changes a string into an array 
it changes a string into an array. So if I have something like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like a string, this is a text, you know, I would print it. Uh, I can turn this into 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the general idea. This turns into this. And the difference is like, um, so let me, let me count this real quick. So now I have 5, 3, 6, 3. And if I have this, this is 6, 9. So this little string here costs us 6 tokens. And this single string costed us uh, just 2 tokens. And it will always cost us two tokens. So if this is twice as long, if this if the array is twice as long, we add more elements to this array, right? So this, uh, as I said, this was six nine. We're gonna add nice, by the way. Uh, we're gonna add like three times amount of the data. Um, we in our token count increases. So now this is this is costing us uh, sixteen tokens, right? Um, but if we do the same thing with a string, we just have a longer string. Uh, it's still the same token count. It's still just one token that, that this costs. It's one token, right? Yeah, one token. So with an explode function, we can have an almost unlimited amount of data stored in very, very compact when it comes to tokens. And um, we can have, like expand the amount of content that we have in our game without actually having to, you know, watch over for our token count. This is very useful, especially if your um, if your data is stored in errors like this. And this is one of the reasons, by the way, why I stored each stat of the mob in its individual arrays. Uh, I could have, um, like for you guys out there, I could have done something like mob um, mob library and it's like, you know, entry one equals, you know, and then, uh, and then it's gonna be, you know, like um, HP, uh, first of all, name equals uh, slime. And then HP equals so on, so on. I could have like have like this this object oriented approach, you know. Um, but the problem with like this kind of like um, object oriented approach is that you it's more difficult to con encode it as as something that can be exploded uh, or unexploded, I guess, into an individual string. Okay, so very long explanation. Here is the function. So we're gonna put this in tools and this is a function, I'm gonna just paste it in again because this is not something I want to reinvent from scratch. Uh, and I generally, I got it somewhere from the Lexeloffel forums, whoever wrote this, thank you so much. Uh, I rewrote it for my purposes a little bit. I kind of like re, uh, repurposed this, but you know, this is this function. So this function takes a string and it returns an array where the string is basically um, split apart into smaller strings and those strings are all put into an array. And the separator is a comma in my case. You could choose a different comma here if you wanted to, to mess with it, but you know, that's it. So this is this is the function I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll here through. It's kind of like kind of like basically searches always for the next comma, then takes the substring of it and, and puts it in an array and returns that whole array. It's very easy. There is um there is two uh, helper functions that, that will add, I will add uh, as well. Uh, explode val is a wrapper and kind of like it wraps this function into a, uh, and and uses something else here to val is a um, function that takes a, an array that consists of strings and turns all those strings in an array into numerical values so um, so something like this um, oh, let me see so if you have an array that looks like zero one two and so forth. These kinds of things will turn into 0, 1, 2. That's what the toval function does. And so the, you might now understand what the explode val function. Basically, we're going to use either explode or explode val. Explode will turn a string that is comma separated into an array with strings in it that might be useful. For example, we might store dialogue that we have well, like with NPCs or like the, the tablet inscriptions that we had. We could store that in one big string and use the explode function to separate it in an array because you, know, you remember when we do when we show message boxes, we are expecting uh, an array of strings to, for each, um, each entry in the array is one individual line. 
So this is the function that uh, the original explode function is just for strings. And for those cases where we don't want to have strings, when we want to have values, we're going to use explode val. That's the gist of it. Uh, the gist of it. Um, so now we can use this to kind of like save a lot of a lot of um, tokens. So let me go through this process again, and just just you can see. So we kind of like uh, we invested a lot of tokens in this. I forgot what how much tokens we had at the beginning, but uh, hopefully I will blink blend in uh, show you like a like an overlay uh, how much we had at the beginning. Because the thing is like these these functions we have to also remember these functions do cost some tokens. Like this is some code, right? So you want to make sure that you come out on top in the end. Usually in big programs you do, in smaller programs it's probably not worth it. Um, okay, so explode val, and then like this. So this is our dpal function that was responsible for um, for uh, for fading in and out, and we can we can even explode it as well. Like all of these can get turned into into um, even our dear x and dear y, which you so often can be easily just exploded. Um, I'm not sure what the cutoff point is. At which point is actually doesn't because you know the, the calling function also causes a um, also costs some tokens, and some at some point it may be worthwhile just look keeping an, an array. But um, these functions here, um, uh, mob HP and so forth, all of these will get filled with you know more mobs. Eventually, this will become a very long string uh, of like, a very long array. So we can just as well um, start uh, introducing the explode function here as well. Uh, with the names here, we have to be careful. The names. Uh, we just use the normal explode function uh, because again the names are supposed to stay strings, and we have to be careful here. We have to in a second here we have to actually go through and and remove all the quotation marks, but that's going to be fine. Uh, I'm going to explode here, explode here. Uh, Got to be careful not to destroy the precious, precious, precious numbers. Okay, and we have to be careful here as well. We cannot actually explode, explode them just yet. So I'm gonna put a star in here um, because we have to turn them into the regular numbers um, <clears throat> because the binary numbers cannot be exploded that way. I think they can't. I haven't actually ever checked, but I, don't, I would be surprised if they were. On the other hand, Lua can do a lot of things that I'm surprised by. Okay, so already you can see. Um, now I want to go through this part here. Um, just, just, just moving the quotation marks real quick. Um, so again, like this part is, is still not dealt with, but otherwise we're fine, and our game seems to be still working. We're we see fading happening. We can move in our directions, which means our our um, dear x and dear y variables are still working. Everything is still fine. It's just um, we arrived at a lot less tokens. So if you compare now, you can see 5,318. So from after we posted the, the function, we just saved you know over over 100 tokens like this. And again, you can imagine like this is maybe not as, as impressive, but you can imagine us having like including 16 different monster types and creating some like really like we basically this is just like creating not tokens from thin air, like 100 tokens in one go. That's kind of like very impressive. I remember when I was coding the chess program and I was really at the limit and I was like, oh, no, what will happen? Like, I cannot actually pull this off. I'm at the limit. And I found this technique and I was like, oh, my gosh. And because it's like it, it's completely... Um, uh, save the entire project. That's why I'm really fond of the explode function. Okay, okay. So the explode function is now done. Um, let us see what else. Aha! I wanted to show you something. Um, so one thing that bothers me is that if you look at this, our our. So I, I, we already talked about a little bit how, how our dungeon kind of looks a bit more like a spaceship, less like a dungeon. So we have like these nice, nice, out, nice outlines that kind of like um, create more, more of an organic look for the way like the hallways look. Everything looks like more, you know, intentional and less like just like a random, uh, random pattern of two different tiles. But um, I don't really get a feeling for, for, for what, you know, all the stuff is made from. It looks like every very, very... Um, 
it looks a bit more futuristic than actual medieval. And everything's still quite flat. It doesn't really look three-dimensional. It doesn't really look as if, it, as if, it's, if, if it takes space. It's kind of like very, you know, paper thin. So let's see at, um, at our template, Midnight Dungeon, how they made it, this. So again, this is Midnight Dungeon. You might remember this. This is by Pixel Art M. Thank you so much, Pixel Art M, for being a huge inspiration and being so cool about it, sharing your, your secrets with us. Um, so here's something that I really love. Here's something. Do you see what happens, uh, like how um, Pixel Art M uses kind of like, what kind of tricks he uses to make us believe that this is, you know, made out of bricks. You see there's, you see brick walls, there's a brick pattern, even though, you know, we had like brick pattern before, but usually it was like, before we had it, it was just like the wall pattern. But he doesn't really have that, although his walls are kind of black, they just like, are um, delineated by this outline. But he still has a brick pattern and that's always at the top of each room. You see there's like this brick pattern here. And he uses something that, that is, a, this is actually the reason why I was like really interested in this. So you see how you can like walk over it. You can, when you walk up to the wall, you kind of cover up part of the wall. The wall is kind of like visually behind your character. So it looks like as if we're looking, you know, from like, from you guys' perspective, as if it's, everything is a bit tilted, so things are behind each other, you know? So if, if things were just flat, you know, there would be the wall and there would be your character, right? But uh, things are tilted, so wait, so, uh, so if, if the, wait, oh gosh, this is so difficult. So if the, here's a wall, your character can walk behind, behind the, in, in front of the wall and might be covered by something. It's not the case, but it could be technically. So it looks a little bit more like perspective is happening, like there's some depth to it. And this is actually something that we see in a lot of these types of games, even very old games like Zelda. Okay, so here's a very unsavory website where you can play Zelda and I hate those websites, but never mind. So you can see that even in this very, very old game, you can see that you can, like your character, if you walks against a wall above them or behind them or like to the north of them, they will partially cover the wall. So it looks like as if your character is kind of like in front of that wall because it covers the, um, the wall, like at least partially. Now Zelda is a very different game from the kind of game we're making because in Zelda, as you can see, you can walk like freely. You can like have a very pixel precise control over where your character is. So, you know, I, I can st I don't have to like align perfectly with, like I, I, don't, like I cannot like walk one tile. At least I can walk one tile, but I, I, like if I press one button, it will just walk a bunch of pixels, but not like always one tile the way we have it. So this is a bit of a, you know, a bit of a different game, but generally like, even that old of a game already has like this kind of very subtle effect in, in there. Here's another uh, unsavory websites with Pokemon Blue or, or Red, like the old Pokemon. This is more, more closer to the kind of game we have because we can always walk one tile. Um, so that's kind of like very similar, but even in this kind of game, you, you see there is a bit of a, there is a bit of an offset of the character introduced here. So you, I also here at least, I thought it wasn't, wasn't the case, but I, even in this game, you cover the wall or obstacles that are behind you a little bit to give you this idea that this, everything is a little bit of this tilted perspective. So in Midnight Dungeon, this, this effect is also achieved, but not by like manipulating the character, by manipulating the position of the character or size of the character. The character is still like within one tile. They just did something like um, Pixel Art M did something that is very, very cool and very nice. Um, the idea is that there's a second floor tile that is only used at the top row of every room. Only at the top row of every room, there is a floor tile that includes a part of the wall, basically. And um, just by including this kind of wall tile, I mean, because it's a floor tile, you can just walk over it. And just by including it, um, uh, everything looks, uh, has like this effect where your character sometimes covers walls that are behind them. Very nice, I love it. It's usually kind of a bit of a pain, a bit of a hack to solve like this, um, to, to implement this kind of um, uh, effect. So I'm really happy about this solution. I, I really enjoy it much, a lot. So I wanna include that in our game. All right, very long speech. Um, let's try to make this work. So I'm, I actually prepared something already. For, I'm sorry again for, uh, for being, um, for, for relying in this episode, especially for, um, on a lot of content that I already had, but you know, there's just so much you can do. So uh, there's some changes here. Um, so as you can see, 
Uh, I uh, switched the colors back to just grayscale the way we had before and we don't have like the purple anymore but again you can still use the purple if you want to um, create your own your own tile set. Here's the new tile that I was talking about. This one. This is the tile I want to I wanna have. Um, the uh, wall tile, I kept it at this, at this kind of like wall tile so we can have this as well. But also I want to introduce this wall tile. So this is going to be, after we scan the entire level, I want to turn all of the wall tiles that are uh, surrounded completely by, by walls. I want them to turn into the three wall tile. Um, um, yeah, so in case, for example, you will see this at the beginning that that doesn't look that hot right well when when um when all of the surrounding tiles are, are like this 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 checkboard pattern so i want to have like a function that that takes care of this that and changes everything in this empty wall tile in the black wall tile and i want to introduce those as well so let me just showcase um you the use of how this looks when uh, when we actually apply this right so first let me let me draw real quick the the outlines okay so this is kind of like our wait a bit while we're here can we somehow quickly so i want to use this tile as the regular wall so you can see like we get like this black black and black kind of effect can we quickly do this and then we just do a fill bam Okay, now this looks a lot cleaner, right? And so with this little half wall tile, oops, I didn't want to fill it. No, don't do it. Um, we, we just put it like always at the top edge of each room. And you can see, ah, that, that looks a lot like more three-dimensional. This looks a lot better. And if we run this, yeah, that, that, seems, that seems good. This should be a walkable tile. So that's something I, I uh, messed up. So let's, let's put it as a walkable. It's completely walkable like the normal walkable tile. There's no difference between this tile and, the, and our regular walkable tile. So you can see this, this seems a lot more cleaner. So I want to now introduce a function that kind of like scans through our level and make sure that this tile um, is put always underneath a wall tile. Let's try that. Oh, by the way, how does currently our, our level look like now that we have those tiles? Yeah, it's, it's better. It's it's kind of like the, the purple brought a lot of the Star Trek Next Generation kind of feeling uh, into our level generation. So, th so this is this is good. But still, it looks doesn't really look like a dungeon, right? Um, okay, so let's let's try let's try to fix this. How do we do this? What's what's the best way of doing this? Oh, by the way, here's also something I have um, just like to ex exemplify um, something I wanted to maybe use like in the final level. So um, just real quick before we go back to the to coding, let me fix this real quick. Okay, so the idea with this wall tile, um, with, with these guys, is you can make a really uh, tall ceiling room if you want to. I'm not going to do this automatically, whoops, um, but eventually you could do something like this. So for example, in here, let's make, a, let's make this room something like this, and I want to actually copy this over. Actually, let us think about the edges in a second here. The idea is that you can make a wall go like like a very high vaulted ceiling, so to speak, right? So it's, now it looks like this is like this very high room, and with these you can even make like windows, right? So it looks like a bit of like a, maybe like a prison or something. I'm not sure, or like a very high ceiling kind of room, like a more of a more a ceremonious kind of room. And then of course, you can still still. Uh, Still close it, close it up with the with the edges. Not something I would probably do procedurally. You could probably pull it off, um, just like maybe something we can we can pull off in these kind of like in the in the final scene somehow, just like an idea. Okay, good. So uh, onto the coding, guys. We don't have too much time. Um, I want to make sure that this is actually set as as a wall and this is set as a wall. So we want to turn all of the walls into three uh, when we do the pretty pretty prettyfy function so this will be turned to three i want to every wall by default to be turned into the, like this black wall another thing i want i thought about is um, i don't like how maybe i don't really like how the doors are integrated you see how the doors are like oh oh no i did i, I did it i did a mistake this this is correct 
Uh, do you know how the doors are integrated into the spaghetti, into the, like the spaghetti, I always like spaghetti, into the, like the wormy structure? Maybe I don't, don't really like that. Maybe I want them to be to be seen as, as something that's alien to the, to the wall. So that's something we might think about. This will require us to do the, um, the signature check a little bit differently, not, not from walkable or not walkable, or actually, uh, we could probably make this very easily if we make this before we do the, the doors. So something like, I'm not sure if this will, this will actually work. So we make the pretty walls before we install the doors. Let's try that. Yeah, so now the doors are, are kind of like seen as a separate entity, that's good. Good. On to the Star Trek stuff. Um, or like fixing the Star Trek stuff. Um, so basically, when I have pretty wall, uh, when, I have, when I have, um, I'm looping through this and this is a wall, then we do th this. Otherwise, so where is this for over? I think it's here. Else if M get... So let's do like a... Let's do it properly. I'm not sure if we're actually saving to tokens like this, but let's let's do it nonetheless. Um, so if tile equals two, um, else if tile equals, so now we're gonna look for tiles that are just floor. So it's gonna be one, then. Now I just wanna see if above me there is a, a wall. And you know, it's, it's, you could of course be like, ooh, uh, let's, let's do some like very complicated calculations, but um, we just can like do like if, um, is walkable uh, x comma y minus one if not is walkable then and so if the tile above me is not walkable i'm just going to set it to um to this guy to, to the four aha and immediately, it just looks no longer like like a Star Trek, uh, a Star Trek thing, but it looks more like a like a castle. You see, like the brick walls really bring out this, the castle uh, the castleness of it. Interesting that he didn't install a door in here. I wonder why. I'm kind of worried that our door function is is, is screwed up because of this, but hey, this is good. Also interesting that there's like this this empty space in here. Huh. I wonder if there's like a hidden room inside. Cool. So this works. Now we have like like our little dungeon uh, happening. This is this is excellent. Um, now uh, the next step is going to be adding more, um, adding more details to the rooms. I want to add some decorations within the rooms. But maybe that's something that comes up in the next episode. Um, again, the code for this will be in the doobly doo. Uh, should, uh, and, and do, I, do I have to post? I don't think I have to post the tile map exclusive. I think you will figure out the tile map yourself. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, join uh, our Discord channel and check out the code below. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.